Hello everyone, welcome to PyLearning. In today's video, we are going to talk about two more magic methods, iter and next. Before we start with iter and next, let's first understand the concept of an iterator. What is an iterator? Any object in Python on which you can loop over is an iterator, right? I'm sure you already know this by now. But how does an iterator really work? Truth is, it employs two special methods, iter and next. Let's see how they work. I'm going to use the Python console here, so it is easier for me to display what I'm trying to explain. So let's define a list here. Let's say x, 1, 2, 3, all right? Now, let's say y equal to iter x. So what happens now is, now we have made our iterator lazy. We can call the next element in the iterator only if we want. We don't have to loop through them automatically. So if I say next y, it is going to return me 1. And then next y, if I do it again, it is going to return me 2. And then if I do it again, it is going to return me 3. Now if I do it, it is going to return me a stop iteration error. So basically this is how things like for loop or while loop actually work. Now, why do we need them in a class? What is the advantage of using methods like iter and next in a Python class? The advantage is that you can make your iterables lazy and therefore they occupy less memory space. So your Python code doesn't determine what the next value is until you ask for it. Let me show you an example. Let's write a simple class called square, all right? All we are trying to do here is, let's have an init method and then I can pass in a value here called max and I say self dot max equal to max. Now I will have an instance method here called get square and all it does is it returns the square of all the numbers in the range of the max. So here I can say for uh, let's say result equal to nothing and I can say for x in range self dot max result dot append x square and finally return the result okay that's it very simple so let's create an object so I can say x equal to square and then pass in a value let's say 5 now let's say y equal to x dot get square okay now before i print y i'm sure you already know what to expect let's also do something here uh, let's import the sys library import sys and then do print sys dot get size of so this way uh, we, we can see what size this variable actually occupies so get size of y and then let's print y okay so now if I run this, you see it occupies around 128 bytes and this is the result. Now why use an iter and a next here? Basically we can save some memory space. Maybe we don't want to do anything with this uh, get square. You know, we only want to do something with some elements of the result. So here instead of using a get square like this, what I can do here is let's remove this. Let's now do diff iter. Now, the iter method always returns the iterator. Of course, you can do all kinds of things with it. For example, define instance method and stuff. So, let's do one thing. Here I can say uh, self dot uh, current equal to zero. So, I'm defining another instance attribute called current and I'm, I'm assigning it the value zero. And then let's return self. So basically we are returning the iterator itself. Now let's define a next method here. Self. So here what I can do is I can check. I can do all those square values uh, uh, calculating the square of every number and I can return the uh, iterable in a lazy manner. So only if the user asks for it then I have to return it. So here I can say if self.current less than equal to self dot max all right then what to do one result 
equal to self dot current square and self dot current plus equal to one because we want to implement the logic of a for loop so it keeps returning the square of every number in the range and then return result all right else raise stop iteration basically all right so now let's try this out now we don't have a get square so what we can do is y equal to iter x like i showed you before in the example so now let's say z equal to next y now print sys dot get size of z and print z okay so now if i run this you see now the size is 24 so basically we have reduced from 128 bytes to 24 bytes only and it is returning zero now if we do this again let's copy this and paste this again so basically we are uh, asking for the next method again it is returning us one see first it returned zero and now it is returning us one and now basically we are able to control the memory space of the object uh, or the iterable that we are calling and we can individually work on every element in the iterable in a lazy manner so this is the advantage of using methods like iter and next i hope you like this tutorial if you have any questions put them down in the comment section and do check out the complete series of object oriented programming in python i will see you in the next video